Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at three as seen on TV tactical products to see how they really work. That's today's video. I love the as seen on TV tactical products. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, this is my 10th, 11th and 12th tactical products I reviewed. Let me see if I can do all of them by memory. I did the tack light, the tack light elite, tack light lantern, tack visor, tack glasses, tack glasses night, tack zoom, and the tax shaver. That's nine already. So this would be 10, 11, and 12. I've got the Bell and Howell tech amplifier, the Bell and Howell tech wallet, and the latest edition, I believe, which is the tech pen. I'm gonna have fun with these. So let me crack these open and see what's inside. In no particular order, let's start off with the tech pen. I bought this from the official website. I got two of them. And if my durability tests don't go so well, I might need both of these. Let me crack one of these open, see how it looks. Nice, attractive uh, display here. Quite a bit of features to it. I'll give them credit for that. Flashlight, pen clip, ballpoint pen, whistle, a whistle. Flathead screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, bottle opener, safety hammer, safety hammer cap. All right, let's open this up. We've got some instructions here. The tack pen, battery type 3LR44s. Come on, man. Not even rechargeable. I got a whole bunch of warnings in here or something, all this stuff. Quick assembly, do this first. Arbitration agreement nobody cares about. Very large red font, do this first. So might as well do this first. To access the battery compartment, turn counterclockwise. And it says remove, okay? All right, well, we got the three batteries in there. Just put them back in, I guess. I'm disappointed this is not rechargeable, though. But we have light. It just seems to be not very bright light. I'll test that out later on, but I, okay, that was that was easy enough. I'm gonna read these instructions over and get to my TAC pin a little bit later on. Let me get to the rest of these products. How about the TAC amplifier? High performance sound amplifier. Now, I did the Magic Ear a couple years ago. I was very underwhelmed. I'm hoping this works better. Oh, I just tore the box. Oh, man. All right, we had a quick guide and instructions. I have a collection of these arbitration agreements. It's almost like I have a, like a hand of playing cards. And the attack amplifier also uses buttons A312 batteries. Kill me with these batteries here, Emson. I look forward to them coming out with the TAC package opener because that's something that I need after opening all their packaging. Wait, I only got one? Maybe I shouldn't have assumed. I thought I was going to get two. According to this quick guide, it looks like I have to place this battery in the uh, earpiece itself. After the unboxing, I'll do that. Time for the tech wallet. First thing that comes out is another arbitration agreement. Very minimal packaging. There are actually no instructions with this. Well, there has to be instructions, right? What's this? Okay, it says fire resistant, credit card protection, money change and keys safe, strap latch secure. All right, it looks like a pretty standard wallet here. So we got a place for your ID. One, two, three, four cards, five cards. One, two, three, four, five cards, ID, cash. There seems to be a small pocket right there. There seems to be a lanyard and a key ring as well. Let me read over the instructions for the first two and I'm going to get started with all these tech products and see how they actually work. All right, I've read over all the instructions. Let's take a look at the tech panel more closely. One thing I notice is that on the instructions it has these Pretty light, easy to read font on the side here. You have two, three, four, five. On the tech pin, not so bright. There's the number four. I don't even know if you can see that. It's it's very difficult to see. Maybe I'm nitpicking though. First thing, I'm gonna start from the bottom. This is the, I guess the top of it, where the flashlight's at. Taking off the end cap here reveals the safety hammer cap, which you can supposedly bash into glass to open it up. Now, if you take that off, and that reveals the bottle opener, which you can turn around and put in there. I'll try that out a little bit later. That's the bottle opener. If you're using the bottle opener, you just gotta hold on your cap and hope you don't lose it. So let's just keep taking these parts out here. So down here, we've actually got the whistle. Let me try it out. All right, well, I guess it works. It's kind of a shrill whistle. I mean, I know whistles are supposed to be shrill. This is shrill even for a whistle. I just got Bailey's attention over there. She just lifted her ears up. All right, so let's keep going. I think I actually missed something. Let me see. Oh, there you go. I missed the screwdriver. Screwdriver, we've got the Phillips screwdriver and the flathead screwdriver. I'll try those out as well later. Then we have the whistle. Then we have the pen itself, which doesn't go into the top. So you have to, I guess, just put it back into here. It's got this little cover on. Let me take that off. Okay, it works. It works as a pin, <laughs> as it should. And then I don't think there's anything else to take off on here unless you want to access the battery compartment for the flashlight. 
So we'll leave that as one piece. This is actually two different pieces. So that's really all the different parts you're gonna take off from the tack pen. It's quite a bit. It's quite a bit. And in not all cases does it go back together. So there's gonna be times you're gonna be holding things in your hand, which that doesn't seem real optimal, but you know, I, I guess that's a trade-off for having all these different tools in your pocket. So let me put it back together real quick here. Hopefully I can do it right. They go together pretty easily, not too bad. So now it's time for me to go out and try this on some field tests. Because using a desk isn't really a good accurate use for it. Let's try it out in the field and see how it actually works. That's next. Let's see how this tack pin works as a flashlight. There's no adjust high or low, it's just one setting and you can zoom in a little bit. And that's pretty much all you can zoom in. That's it. By the way, don't worry about those weeds in my yard. That's just extra decorations for this video. Let's compare to the original Bell and Howell tack light and see how they compare. All right, here's tack pin zoomed in. Tack light on high. Whoa. Tack pin, tack light. That's on high. You can zoom that in. You can zoom the tack light way in. This is tack pin, tack light zoomed in. That's medium. Tack pin, tack light medium. Tack pin, tack light low. Tack light low, zoomed in, tack pin, zoomed in. Let me try this uh, lower lumen, lumen top, which is 120 lumens, and see how that does. All right, so we have tack pin over here, zoomed in. The lumen top at 120 lumens. It's still brighter. Nowhere in the instructions is a tack pin say how many lumens it is. It doesn't say in the instructions, it doesn't say on the website, it doesn't say in the packaging, nowhere. So I'm gonna guess it's less than 120 lumens, because tack pin, 120 lumens, lumen top. Tack pin's less, so I'm gonna say it's, I don't know, 60, 70 lumens maybe? All right, I've got my tack pin here. I've got my other tack pin here, but I've got this one in a Ziploc bag that's been sealed airtight because I want to duplicate one of their demonstrations in the commercial. They show it being frozen in a solid block of ice. Now, the, thing, the reason I have a Ziploc bag is because I don't know if it's waterproof. They don't say that it's waterproof, even though they do have it in a block of ice. I don't want to take a chance and have the water ruin it. I just want to have one variable affecting it, and that's the cold. They say they can withstand being frozen in a block of ice. I don't know if it's going to withstand being in the water, so I'm just going to do, go with the block of ice and not the water itself. So I've got this Starbucks cup full of water. Got my tack pin in an airtight bag. Put the lid on to keep it in place. All right, I'm going to stick this in my freezer and come back tomorrow, open it up and see if it still works. There's only a few reviews out there, but someone actually posed an interesting question. There's nothing about refills for the pen itself on the tack pen instructions or the website. And that person was wondering if those refills are going to exist at all. It's a good question. All right, it's time for the classic car running over the flashlight test. Oh, it actually, okay. Oh, it actually turned, hit the button, but it's still working. I give him credit, it's still working. Awesome. I've got my tack pen and my frozen Starbucks cup. I'm gonna have to run some water over this to get it out of this cup. And then I'll take the ice, smash it with a hammer and see the tack pen still works after being frozen for 24 hours. All right, here we go. This should be interesting. Ugh. Sweet, look at this. How cool is that now? My tack drink. All right, so I gotta be careful not to damage the tack pin. I just wanna crack the ice. It's kinda off to this one side, so I'm gonna put it on the side so it's not gonna be on the top or bottom, and I'm gonna kinda hit in the center here. Hiya! Gotta be gentle. All right, the tack pin. Oh, the ice got in there. Oh no! Well, I guess I'll find out if it's waterproof or not. Oh man, I thought I was being so careful with that. Oh, but it worked. I'm actually more impressed the fact that water still got in there. Either I didn't seal it properly or there's a hole in the bag, but either way, not only did it survive the frozen test, but it survived the water test as well. I gotta say, the others are not impressing me so much, but the tack pen is winning me over. I'm quite happy with the tack pen's performance so far. It's getting better the more I use it. So good job, tack pen. Your block of ice test, I would say, was accurate. Now I'm gonna try out the screwdriver feature of the tack pen. I always forget which one it is. That's, that's not, that's the pen. I got the pen part, where's the tack? All right, there's a the screwdriver. You can't put the end back on there, which I wish you could, but you, you just can't. But it's got Phillips and flathead, and it feels magnetic in there. It feels like it kind of grabs it. 
So that's kind of nice. But I've got four pilot screws I put in here just for four simple screws. So on this side, I've got a flathead screwdriver. Very cheap, very cheap flathead screwdriver because I figured this is probably going to be on the low end. So I might as well compare it to a, a cheap screwdriver. Let's see how just a regular flathead screwdriver goes. Looks fine. Nothing, nothing groundbreaking. Let me try this one a few spins here. All right, well, the handle is not as good, obviously, and I'm feeling this I'm feeling this clip kind of moving around, but honestly, it's not, it's not that bad. I can make it work. Another cheap Phillips screwdriver. All right, no problem. As expected, generic cheap screwdriver. Let's try this one. This clip is in the way. Can I take this clip off? This clip is kind of a problem. It's spinning in my hand as I'm trying to use a screwdriver. I don't know if I can take this off or not. Oh yeah, I can take it off. Good. I don't like the clip when I'm trying to do the screwdriver. It's a, it's a little bit awkward, but honestly, in a pinch, I think it would actually work. I'm not going to hate on the, on the tack pin screwdriver function. I know it's supposed to be kind of an emergency screwdriver. And for that, I think it does work. The handle may not be as good as even a cheap screwdriver and the clip gets in the way and you're going to have to figure out what to do with it when you're not using it. But otherwise, I think the tag pin screwdriver function works pretty well. After drilling four screws halfway into a piece of wood, I'm, I'm worn out. I need something to drink. I'm going to call for my drink now. Let me see. Where's the whistle at? The whistle's in here somewhere. No, not there. I'll find the whistle. It's in here. Is that the whistle? That's the pen. Where's the whistle at? It was stuck. All right, here we go. Now it's time for me to call for my nice, cool drink. Pretty handy, huh? Now it's time for the bottle opener. Where's, where's the bottle opener? Now I gotta find the bottle opener. It's in here somewhere. No, that's not a screwdriver again. I'll figure this out. Let me see. Oh, the bottle opener's down, down by, the, uh, by the safety hammer. Oh, I see, you have to take the safety cap off and then put it back in there. It's not confusing. And now it's time for my nice ice cold drink because I don't, I don't do the hard stuff at three o'clock in the afternoon. Here we go. Oh, it's working, kind of. I mean, that wasn't the best bottle opener I ever used, but it worked. So cheers to the tack pin. Jack of all trades, master of none. Time now for the Tack Wallet versus the wallet I've been using for a while now, which is the Ollet Wallet. Now I've reviewed quite a few wallets this year. This is the wallet that I've chosen as my top pick, but let's see how the Tack Wallet compares. Putting them side by side, interesting because the Tack Wallet's already thicker than the Ollet, and the Ollet's full. I have all my stuff in here still. The Tack Wallet's already thicker. But I'm gonna take all the contents of my wallet out and move it here and see how it works. But the Tack Wallet has, this is for your ID, this is some credit card slots, this, I guess, is another credit card slot, money pocket, key ring, and a change per pocket right there. I've never wanted to have change in my wallet because it makes it too thick, but I'll put it in there for this case. So let me uh, make the switch here. So on the Ollet, I have my ID and a Discover card. So the ID goes in here. I'm not sure how, how easy that's going to be to get out of there. I'll have to find out. Just, I'm going to put my credit cards off to the side here. Over here is an American Express card, and this is my phone stand, which I actually use quite a bit. Over here, I have a tracker and a debit card. And over here, I've got another debit card and some business cards. Back here, I've got some a little bit of cash. That was all in here and it was uh, totally fine. Let's see what I can do with this. I have a feeling this isn't going to hold quite as much. Maybe I should put it back to front. I want to just put the credit cards in here for now. Well, they don't really go in that easily. They're not just slipping right into the slots. I'm kind of having to manhandle them in there. All right. I've got a few more things to put in here. Let me put my cash in there. I still have these things to fit in there somewhere. If I can fit this behind the Discover card. I don't know. I don't know. Behind the ID? It's not gonna fit behind the ID either. How about back here? I mean, I had to jam the credit cards in there as it is, so I, I can't jam this one in there because this is slightly wider than a normal credit card. Maybe I'll just put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the money pouch. This, there's no way this is gonna fit. This is 
pretty thick. It's a lot thicker than a credit card. There's no way that's fitting in here. Or maybe it will fit in there. Oh, I got it behind my ID. I stand corrected. It, there is a way it will go in there. I guess I'll put my business cards in here again. All right, so I got everything in the TAC wallet. I don't have a key in there. Look how thick that is. All right, does Velcro shut <laughs> barely? It barely shuts. Let me stick it in my pocket. It feels pretty thick back there. All right, so I'm going to take this out in the field and give it a shot. I might try to stick a key in there at some point. Right now, it's way thicker than the outlet wallet that I have, but we'll see how well it does. All right, so when you have the tack wallet in your back pocket, like I have it in my back pocket right now, I know some people don't have it in their back pocket while driving, but when I have my outlet in my back pocket, I can sit on it because it's it has two cards wide, it's a little bit wider, has such a low profile, you don't even realize you're sitting on it. With a tech wallet, I feel like George Costanza, I'm off to one side. It's set so thick, it's like a brick under my right side. So I understand what they're going for, but if you have more than a couple cards, the tech wall is just so thick, it becomes too thick. So I don't know. So I was at the convenience store last night and I thought I was gonna be all cool whipping out my tech wallet. So pull out my wallet. Nobody was impressed, but I was. But the problem is I went inside to get my card out and even still, I'm having a hard time getting the card out. In fact, it was so hard to get out, I ended up just putting it back in, in the money pouch because I didn't want to have to deal with that again. And then to close it, you can't close it with one hand. I mean, you have to use two hands to close it. Unlike the outlet, which you just flip shut. This is a two-handed close operation and it's, it's really thick too, so. I don't know, that, that didn't really go so well. All right, here I am out at the retention basin out in the middle of the boonies outside of Las Vegas. And I wanna duplicate something I saw on the TAC wallet commercial. They show Nick Bolton or somebody shooting through the TAC wallet with a bow and arrow and they shoot through a regular wallet. Now when they shoot the TAC wallet, it just bounces right off like it's made out of rubber. And when they shoot the regular wallet, it pierces it. So uh, we're gonna see if that's actually accurate. Uh, I've got my TAC wallet, I've got a generic wallet We'll see what happens. Oh wait, in honor of the TAC wallet. I gotta put on the TAC glasses. Are oh, these are TAC glasses blue. Do you want the TAC glasses or TAC glasses blue? Which one do you wanna wear? <laughs> How about the regular TAC glasses? All right, so I'm gonna let the archer wear the uh, TAC glasses. I'm gonna have the TAC glasses blue on. I also need to empty the contents of my TAC wallet out so I don't pierce my ID and my credit cards. We're gonna attach to this target and get started. All right, so we got our TAC glasses. We got our bow and arrow. We're ready to shoot the TAC wallet and see if it can actually hold up. Oh, what did you hit? Well, the metal clip is definitely uh, arrow proof. Let's try the rest of it now. How about if I use the whistle on my TAC pen to, uh, to signal when to shoot? <laughs> uh oh, did it graze it? Graze it. <laughs> oh no. Just a little bit. No, we got it. I think we're gonna keep trying. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. It actually bounced off just like the commercial. I'm completely shocked here. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Oh, they're not kidding, bit. man. It actually, it did bounce off. Yeah. It actually, I'm, sh I'm actually totally shocked. All right, after the impressive demonstration by the attack wall, this looks a lot like the one they used for the comparison. Now let's see if this one does the same thing. If it does the same thing, then they got some paper wallet. If it goes through this one, then I'm even more impressed. Oh. <laughs> So maybe that wasn't a very fair comparison. It bounced off the other wallet too. Let's see if it damaged the other one as much. No, that, that could be a, a question. What did they use? A paper wallet for the for their demonstration? I mean, it, didn't, it didn't go to the next side. <laughs> you know, just barely. I mean, if you had it there, if it hit you, you would survive. That's true. Well, you start putting but your wallet by your heart, one, I guess. You know. Yeah. Shirt pocket, you're good. Maybe you need a bigger wallet. It's just like a more just make a wallet wider, out of wider shirt. character. Yeah, wider space. All right. Well, I guess I don't, I'm not really sure if that demonstration really proved anything other other than. Their test really wasn't as impressive as, as I thought it was. Maybe it's these tech glasses. It's the tech glasses, you know, like I think that that, that may, may affect the results a little bit too. All right, well, I guess I'm just gonna go home and, uh, and wrap this thing up. Thank you to Larry for helping me out. And thanks to Jaden for, for some additional camera work. So we're back home to wrap up this video. And finally, let's get the tech amplifier set up. I read the instructions on this as well. They already have a silicone cover on there, which I'm just gonna leave that one. So the first thing I'm supposed to do is open this battery cover and put the battery in there. And the battery's taped onto the packaging. All right, so it goes like this plus side up. And then we close it. And then we, and then we close it. All right, there we go, all right. Now it says to turn it on low, 
which I believe it's on low, and then stick it in your ear. All right, so the volume's all the way down. Let's see how it goes. I don't hear anything. In fact, I hear less. Oh, I do hear something. It sounds like when you hold a, a shell uh, uh, up to your ear and hear the ocean, that's what I'm hearing. Hello, hello. Not, good, not so good. I've got about midway up now. Let's try it out. Oh yeah, I, all I hear is what I do hear is very mid-rangey and echoey, actually. I don't like having it just in one ear either. I, I don't know why they only sell you one. I don't know why. I shouldn't have assumed it was two, but I guess I thought it might have been two. I have it midway up. I don't think I hear any better on my right ear. It's just everything sounds very staticky and mid-rangey and echoey. I don't really feel like it's amplifying anything but the ambient noise. I don't feel like my voice, my voice is so mid-rangey. It sounds like radio static. That's what it sounds like. Well, either way, I'm gonna take this out in the field and try this one out for an actual field test and see how it works. All right, so I got my tech amplifier here. I've got it all the way down and they say to start it off all the way down, but you can't hear anything all the way down. So I'm gonna put it all the way up. All right, it's all the way up. They say it's discreet and nobody knows it's even there. How discreet is that? Is that pretty discreet? So right now, all I hear is this kind of muddy mid-range hum in my right ear. But what I want to do is over here, I'm going to test out some music. I got some music that's not going to give me any copyright trouble that I licensed from Epidemic Sound. I'm going to try with and without the earpiece in. Oh, wow. I hear a lot more frequencies without this. I plug in my ear. All right. I feel like the the constant hiss almost drowns out what I'm trying to listen to. When I take the earpiece out, the music's clear. <laughs> they say that that it's supposed to be clear with it in. It's just a it's just a bunch of mid range. It's just a, bit, a mid range hiss the entire time. When I take it out, almost sudden all the frequencies open up. Try turning it down a little bit. That didn't really help. There aren't really very good reviews for this, and I can kind of see why. If you want to amplify mid range ambient sounds, this is fantastic. If you want to boost important sounds high or low frequency, it may not be. All right, so I think I figured out a way for you to hear what I'm hearing with the TAC amplifier, because I want you to hear it. I want you to hear with all of its glory what the TAC amplifier can actually do. So this is my H1 zoom recorder, which I'm actually speaking into right now with this lapel mic. This is my lapel mic right here. So I figured out last night if I take the lapel mic off and put the TAC amplifier just in the right spot, you can hear it. What I have to do is attach this, these headphones so I can hear it, just to make sure I'm getting it right. All right, so here we go. I've got to turn the, uh, the volume all the way up. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. How's it sound? All right, well, this is probably not very good, so let me turn it down even more. I sound like an old school radio announcer. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to YAWN Radio 1942. Special guest today is Bing Crosby. And here is without. This is, welcome back to 2020 where you get the full range of frequencies. All right, I have to turn it down even more. It's still, it's still distorting, no matter how far I turn it down. This is with a TAC amp, maybe about 50%. And this is without the TAC amp. This is with the TAC amp turned all the way up. And this is without the TAC amp. As you can see, it's, it's just, it's just this muffled mid-range. It, it boosts sounds, but the background sounds, listen to my car in the background. And, and my voice isn't, isn't any better. It's just, it's just not good. Let me turn it down some more. I think all the way down is off, because when I do that, I hear nothing. So that's the tech amplifier, or the mid-range amplifier. All right, so in recap, I definitely have some mixed opinions about the three tech products here. I would say the tech amplifier is the one that I'm the least impressed with. It does amplify sound, but a very narrow bandwidth of, of frequencies. You lose the high, you lose the low, you get everything, including the ambient sound, blasted right in the center. I'm not a fan of the tech amplifier. I'm not quite as impressed with the tech wallet either. I mean, it did hold up to the arrow test. That was nice. Of course, the generic wallet held up as well. I understand what they're going for. If you want a really compact, small wallet, this might be an option for you, but it doesn't really seem to offer anything that any other wallets I've tried out does. It just seems to be kind of a generic wallet. I don't really see a lot to it. 
If you want have more than a few cards, it's really thick. If you take advantage of the keychain or the, the change holder, it's even thicker. Something like the Ollet that I usually use is a little bit wider and much more optimized in space. I'm just, I mean, I can see how some people will like this. I'm just not one of them. I will say I'm kind of a fan of the tack pin though. Now there's a lot of tactical pins out there and I, I don't have much experience with those. So uh, the high end tactical pin users may scoff at something like this. And, and this isn't really advertised to them anyways. This is advertised to the average consumer. And to the average consumer, I do think that it has some merit. The flashlight isn't particularly bright. I mean, the, the screwdriver isn't particularly effective. It held up all the durability tests. I was surprised that it held up in the water and the ice block and it got run over. It's, it's durable, it holds up. I'm not sure all the things are as useful as they make it out to be. The whistle isn't that great. But once again, when you don't have something and this is your only option, it becomes suddenly very useful. So that's all I've got. It was a fun video to make. If you've tried any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. Or if you have some alternatives, let me know what you think of those as well. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time.